Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News daily update. Friday, the 17th of February. Once again, we have Avi Lipkin in studio from Israel, traveling through America. Of course, Avi was born in the U.S. and uh, speaks better English than I do. What can I say? <laughs> good to have you back here, Avi. I wouldn't say that, but uh, good. All right. <laughs> we're, we're both pretty okay in English. That's okay. Right. Well, I was, I was attempting, for, uh, attempting a lighthearted moment there. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I knew you'd appreciate that. So, Avi is here with a new book, and, and that's why I would like you, you to listen seriously, because this is kind of a serious book. Avi, uh, tell everybody about Return to Mecca. You've written five other books. This is book number six. Y you told me a minute ago that it's different from the others. What's different about it? Well, uh, my first books were books of alarm, books of warning, about the threat of Islam to destroy the West, to destroy Israel. And my fourth book, uh, uh, Israel's Bible Block, talks about the new Judeo-Christian political party which I'm working to form in Israel. One of the reasons I'm working to form this party is because I believe that they will come, that there will be a tsunami or avalanche of immigration to Israel of Jews and Christians, Christian spouses, children, others. Um, Israel's population will double and triple from five and a half to to 10 million to 15 million. And uh, the political party that I'm working to form will be the biggest political party in the Israeli political system after this tsunami takes place. Um, and then all of a sudden I began to realize that the tsunami is much closer than we realize because Islam is winning. Islam is taking over the world. America is being denuded of its Christianity or its Judeo-Christian basis. Uh, America today is now a, a, a Christian, Muslim, comma, Jewish, Hindu country, according to what the president yeah. said in his uh, address. Absolutely. Our own president uh, does not refer to America as a Judeo-Christian nation. It is a Christian Muslim nation, which means one nation under God and Satan. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry well, about that. <laughs> I had to let that escape. Moving right along. Yeah, so anyway, so, and what I've been seeing is that the threat to America has shifted from a physical violence, terrorism, war scenario against the United States of America to a buyout uh, scenario in which America will be conquered uh, by the Muslims using the money power, the political power, and demographics by invasion. Uh, the, the whole Middle East scenario today of the Arab Spring will lead to a desolation in the Middle East and emptying out of the Muslim population because after they destroy the Christian population in Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon, then the Muslims will flee, they'll come here. America will go from 30 million Muslims today to 130, 150 million Muslims. You know I have a three-year jail sentence in Switzerland for criticizing Islam. Uh, the, the American administration today wishes to bring that law of Switzerland and, and Europe and the United Nations to America that anyone who criticizes another religion, who criticizes Islam, will go to jail so if they're bringing in 100 or 150 million refugees who are starving to death in the deserts of North Africa or in the Middle East, and anybody criticizes that, you know, I'm just not being a, a humane to these poor people. So Christianity and Judaism will be squelched, they'll be suppressed. Islam will become the religion of the land here in America. When you have 100 to 150 million Muslims in America, then it will be easy for them to kill the Jews on Saturday and the Christians on Sunday. Then they're going to flee to Israel. Uh, when they come home to Israel, our borders will grow, like I said before many times, according to the Deuteronomy 11 promises of God, from the, the Mediterranean to the Euphrates, from Lebanon to Saudi Arabia, including the Arabian Peninsula in its entirety, or part of it, great parts of it. And what's going to happen is, return to Mecca basically gives the biblical justification for this. Where is it in the Bible? It's there in the Bible. It's just the Jewish people have not seen it. Christians see it. Uh, Galatians 4, 25 mm -hmm. talks about Mount Sinai <coughs> yeah. and Hagar in Arabia. Josephus talks about it. Um, uh, Jethro, you know, my wife and I are very, very, my wife is here with me in the studio. My wife and I are very romantic people. You know, here in America, couples go to Blockbusters and pick up a movie and then they make popcorn and watch the movie together. Very romantic evening at home. My wife and I watch Arabic TV. <laughs> and <laughs> there we see the imams, you know, in Mecca saying, Moses and Aaron and Jethro were here at the Black Stone, the Kaaba in Mecca. And, you know, we know that the Israelites were here 
And so anybody who knows that knows that we're coming back because God says, wherever your feet will tread, and I will give to you. By the way, and that's important because in their culture, they, re they realize that it's possible for someone to make a claim on the basis of history. Yes. And they're, they are frightened to death, as I understand it, that Israel will make such a claim. And essentially, that's at the heart of this book, that uh, uh, Islam understands that in their wilderness wanderings, uh, the tribes of Israel actually set foot. They were the first to set foot and to kind of establish that territory in Mecca and Medina before moving on into the Holy Land and claiming that land as God instructed them to do. But all along the way, he made that promise, everywhere your foot shall touch the ground. Yes. That'll and, be and, you. And by the way, a very important point is that Medina... The full name of Medina in Arabic is Medina Menawara. Medina Menawara means Medina the menorah. Or Medina which is lit, lit up. Mm -hmm. Okay, menorah means yeah. to light up. Okay. Yeah. Another name for Medina, I mean the two holy cities of Islam are Mecca and Medina. Another name of Medina is Yathrib. Yathrib means Jethro. But Jethro is not buried there. Jethro is buried in the Holy Land because he had to flee together with the, ten, with the 12 tribes, to the land, the promised land, north of Saudi, because of the killing, I believe, of uh, Cosby and Zimri by Phineas when he skewered them. This is in the book of Numbers. And you've got all, all of in, that. It's all in the book. All in the book. And it's, a, it's an aspect of Bible prophecy that I'm sure you haven't uh, read. Now, uh, I am a Christian dispensationalist. I believe there is coming a judgment from God. I believe in the millennial reign of the Messiah. He's going to reign on earth for a thousand years from Israel and from Jerusalem. I really believe in the kingdom. And the Christians will be there with the Jews. Uh, you bet we will. And it's going to happen. This is for real. And the point of all this is Islam is afraid to death that this might happen and they're trying to stop it, right? Yes, and, but I'll say another thing also. There are some Muslims, look at how God works. There are some Muslims who are saying, we must gather all the Jews from all over the world in the Holy Land so that we, it'll be easier to kill all of them. Yeah. So, so you, know, you know how God uh, says one thing, Satan is the great counterfeiter and the great liar? Oh, yes. And so what's going to happen is, I mean, we know who's going to win in the end, but my point is that we are talking about a final battle. This is the Elijah moment. We're talking about the final battle in which God defeats Satan, Allah. When we take <coughs> Mecca and Medina, return to Mecca and Medina means the termination of Islam. Because when the Jews and the Christians take Mecca and Medina, we will ban Islam forever. And we will send the devil to the pits of hell for a thousand years. And, of course, Christians speak of this as Armageddon. There is going to be a final battle. And we're so close. I think we're about five years away, if not less. The stage is being set. And, uh, uh, and of course, as, uh, as uh, believers in, in, in Christian... And, by the way, I should point out at this point that the Bible is about four-fifths Old Testament prophecy, about one-fifth New Testament prophecy. So the, the massive, the bulk of our own Judeo-Christian Bible involves Israel in the latter days yes. much, much more than it involves, than it involves the church. And, and, and it speaks of this regathering of Israel, the, the mounting of great armies, and this final conclusive battle in the Middle East. So I think we're basically on the same page here. Yeah, but we have to look up? <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> and you know why we always say keep looking up? Because we believe that our Lord is coming soon, our Lord Jesus. So... And thanks for being here, Abba. Always great. As I always say, keep looking up. <laughs>